The year is 1996. Taiwan had their first presidential election, the Nintendo 64 was released, and the year a college kid made a huge bid with some investors to cash in on a $33 million Harrier jet from some Pepsi promo. Wait, what? So how does this work? Well, Pepsi had just debuted a hot new TV commercial called Pepsi Stuff, which still today is the largest promotional campaign in the company's history. The commercial was to promote their latest campaign where customers could accumulate Pepsi points upon purchasing their drink that could then be exchanged for some fully sick Pepsi corporate swagger. Not only could customers get points from buying Pepsi products, but they could also purchase Pepsi points directly for 10 cents each. There were 53 different items in total that customers could choose from. Notably absent from this list of items was of course the Harrier jet that was featured as part of the commercial. Most people who saw the commercial figured that the jet was part of Pepsi's zany sense of humor and not a real prize. Gotta start drinking Pepsi. But in Seattle, Washington, a young man named John Leonard wasn't laughing. He saw the Harrier jet in the commercial as a legitimate offer. Given that he was currently studying business, he saw this as an opportunity for promotional arbitrage. You see, although the Harrier jet was not listed as an obtainable product, it did have a listing price of 7 million Pepsi points on the advertisement, which technically by law means that the Harrier jet was a real offer. Let's say you actually wanted to make a bid on the jet. In order to accumulate the points required, you would have to purchase 16,790,000 cans of Pepsi. All in, you'd have to spend approximately $4 million at the time. So whilst the expense here weighs far less than the price tag of the Harrier jet, this was not feasible for John. His dreams could have just been over. However, luckily, there was a kind of loophole that could be exploited. So long as you provided 15 Pepsi points with any purchase, you could balance the rest of the sum with directly purchased Pepsi points when making a transaction for corporate swagger. With Pepsi points being 10 cents each, some quick math would indicate that all John had to do was come up with $700,000 to buy the 7 million Pepsi points for the jet. The question was, how was he going to get this much money? Well, over the next several months, John was somehow able to convince five investors who have gone unnamed to fund this venture. And on March 28, 1996, John mailed the 15 Pepsi points along with a check for the $700,000 and politely asked for his fighter jet. Several weeks went by and he heard no response, until finally the company returned John's check and basically said the Harrier jet was just fanciful. They even threw in some pity coupons to apologize for the misunderstanding. By this point, John had already invested around $4,000 into consulting with legal professionals and researching case law on deceptive advertising. So instead of backing down, he secured an attorney and doubled down on his demand, writing a letter something like this. Soon enough, the battle found itself in court. With the help of counsel, John filed suit, claiming that Pepsi's ad had constituted as a binding offer and that the company had breached contract by refusing to exchange 7 million Pepsi points for a Harrier jet. A flood of news reports followed the filing, and Pepsi made no qualms about publicly sharing its thoughts on the matter. Tens of millions of Americans and people around the world saw the spot, got the joke, and laughed, a PepsiCo spokesman told CBS News. Mr. Leonard saw the spot, hired business advisors and lawyers, and decided to take legal action. I didn't want any publicity on this, Leonard retorted. I'm not trying to make a statement. I'm not looking for a settlement. I just want a plane. In an interview with the Associated Press, he reiterated that he was simply trying to take Pepsi up on an offer it made to the public. As things often play out in America's justice system, the case turned into a three-year-long procedural slog before making its way to Judge Kimba Wood of New York's Southern District Court. Ultimately, the case came down to whether Pepsi's TV ad constituted a legally binding offer. And at the end of the day, the decision to not award the jet to John all came down to three facts. Number one, advertisements are generally not considered offers in contract law. Number two, an enforceable contract requires both parties' signatures. And number three, the ad was obviously a joke. So at the end of the day, John was not getting his jet. After all, even if he did get the jet, he wouldn't be able to fly it as any aircraft would need to be demilitarized before it can be sold to the public. And with these modifications, the plane would no longer be operable. However, it's reasonable to assume that John and his investors were simply in it for the cash settlement which unfortunately for him, 
did not happen. After John's lawsuit was filed, the Harrier jet commercial continued to air, but with some minor tweaks to drive home the joke. The points for the jet were increased from 7 million to 700 million, and two words were tacked onto the closing text. Just kidding. Thanks for watching. Why don't you stick around for more random videos?